15 minute or less lecture series, Human Anatomy, Chapter 3, Tissues. Tissues are a group of cells that usually have a common origin in the embryo and function to carry out specialized activities. The cells are all similar and they're sort of doing the same thing. Epithelial tissue is one of the four basic types. It, it comes in sheets of cells. There's very little extra cellular material. It covers the body surfaces and lines hollow organs and cavities and also forms glands and ducts. Connective tissue, the most diverse category in both structure and function. It does things like protection and supporting body and organs, uh, binding organs in place, storing uh, energy in the form of fats, immunity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Muscular tissue is specialized to produce contractions or shortens. This shortening will lead to generation of force, allowing for movements of both body parts and materials inside the body. Muscle tissue can also generate heat. And nervous tissue. It detects changes in the internal and external environment, and then integrates and processes the information to thereby respond, regulating the activities of muscles and glands, and overall maintaining homeostasis. Cell junctions are where cells come together and attach to each other. This is very important for some uh, tissues to have the cells tightly attached to each other and making connections between each other. There's the tight junction, here we have transmembrane proteins where the adjacent cells have the membrane proteins attached to each other tightly and fuse the membranes. This forms a barrier to prevent things from going between the cells. I think of it as superglue. There are adherins. These have dense layers of transmembrane proteins as shown here that then bind to each other as well as attach to the microfilaments of the uh, cytoskeleton. Uh, they form and act more like Velcro that holds cells together, but things can pass between them sometimes. Uh, desmosomes are spots where you have dense layers of proteins. Some of them interact with proteins in the neighboring cells, and then they also bind to intermediate filaments of the cytoskeleton. They're very good at resisting forces and preventing separation. I like to think of them as rivets. Hemidesmosomes are similar in structure, except instead of attaching to a neighboring cell, they attach to a protein and carbohydrate complex called the basement membrane. And this is only found in epithelial tissue. And then gap junctions off have two cells come together and form tunnels between the two cells, allowing fluids in their cytosol, their cytosol to flow between the cells and other materials flow between the cells. Epithelial tissue. Structurally, epithelial tissue is densely packed continuous sheets of cells. Very little extracellular material except for the basement membrane, and it lines surfaces of hollow organs, etc., and exposed to some sort of open space. Their functions include providing a selective barrier to limit, uh, limit what passes through or allowing certain things to pass through. Uh, they can produce products that are then secreted uh, through the free surface and they can protect against friction. So here is a generic epithelial tissue, lots of cells, the basal surface lying attached to the basement membrane, the uh, lateral surfaces where the cells make contact with each other, and the apical surface, which is the free surface near the open space or lumen. Uh, epithelial tissue is avascular. They have no blood vessels going through them. Uh, they're higher, highly innervated, lots of nerves, interact with epithelial tissue to the receptors, and they are often uh, then next to connective tissue where you'll find blood vessels to bring the nutrients they need. Simple squamous epithelial tissue, thinnest, thin layered cells that are flat, one layer. They allow for the rapid movement of materials across them. They form the lining of the air sacs in the lungs, the lining of blood vessels, and some of the serous membranes. <coughs> There is the simple cuboidal epithelial tissue, shaped kind of like cubes, one layer only. They can absorb materials or secrete materials from the walls of kidney tubules, the secretory regions of many glands, ducts in some glands. Uh, then there's the simple column epithelium. These are columnar cells with a much longer than they are wide, look kind of like columns. Uh, they are great for secreting stuff or absorbing materials. They can be non-ciliated, for instance, in the small intestine and large intestine. 
They nonciliary form often have microvilli, little protrusions sticking out that increase surface area and therefore increasing the ability to absorb uh, nutrients or secrete materials. Um, many times there are cells in epithelial tissue that produce mucus uh, in the form of mucin that when mixed with water becomes mucus. These cells are often called globulate cells. There is ciliated uh, simple column epithelium that is found in areas like the respiratory tract to move mucus along or uh, the uh, uterine tubes to cause a current in the fluids in the uterine tubes that will then move the oocyte along. Pseudostratified column epithelium is only one layer, but the cells are arranged such that the nucleuses are all bounced around, and you might be tricked into thinking there are multiple layers when there is only one. They can lack cilia and be found in places like the male epididymis and urethra, include goblet cells to produce mucus, or they can be ciliated and found in some regions of the respiratory tract, and the cilia would then be beating to move the mucus along. Stratified simple squamous epithelium has many, many layers of cells, with the most superficial ones being super flat, aka squamous. They all divide at the base and then get pushed upwards. Non-keratinized are alive all the way through, so all of the cells are alive. They help protect against friction or are found in places like the oral cavity, the pharynx, the esophagus, the vagina, and anus. Keratinized, on the other hand, are very strong, tough cells. However, as they become keratinized, they die, so the ones near the surface are dead, and they are found only in the epidermis. Stratified cuboidal epithelium has two or more layers, with the most superficial layers being cube-like in shape. They form some of the ducts of the glands found in the body, and also some of the malurethra. Stratified column epithelium, the cells near the surface are column-like in shape, and you have two or more layers of cells. Again, they found the form the ducts of some large salivary glands and are also part of the melurethra and the conjunctiva of the eye. Surprise, there's another one, the transitional epithelium. These cells, when the organ is relaxed, are sort of rounded, cubish in shape, but when the organ is distended or stretched, they stretch out and look squamous or flat, so they're transitioning between two different shapes. They are only found in the urinary system. Simple epithelia are great for diffusion, absorption, and secretion, and they're super thin. Stratified epithelia are great for protection. Their layers help to protect the underlying tissue. Glands are a single cell or cells that secrete substances. They are always made of epithelial tissue. Endocrine glands have no ducts and secrete their hormones into the surrounding fluids or bloodstream. Exocrine glands, on the other hand, have ducts and they secrete their substances onto a surface in our mouth on our skin, inside the stomach, various places like that. Uh, the ones with ducts can have one duct that attaches to various secretory portions, or it could have two or more ducts that is infused to a single duct attached to various secretory portions. The way things can be secreted in glands can be by exocytosis. This process is then called American secretion. It can be by a pinching off of the apical layer of the cell. So when materials accumulate there, it pinches off and is released. This is apocrine secretion. Or it can be uh, secreted by having the cells fill up with the material and then break apart and die. This is holocrine secretion. Connective tissues are very diverse, have cells and extracellular material, usually vascularized, usually have blood vessels. Uh, the extracellular matrix includes the ground substance, so it's just the filler materials between the cells and the fibers. It can be solid, can be gelatinous, can be a fluid, and it can support cells, provide a medium of exchange, et cetera, et cetera. They're very diverse. The protein fibers found in most connective tissue can be of three types. The collagen fibers that are very strong and resist forces, but also flexible. Uh, it can be elastic fibers that are somewhat branched and made of elastin and are able to stretch and return to the original shape. And reticular fibers, which also provide support and strength, very branched, often providing a framework that allows for the filtering of materials. Any uh, connective tissue can have one or more of these protein fibers. Every other connective tissue is a loose connective tissue. The cells are scattered about, the fibers are scattered about. You can find all three kinds of fibers here. Uh, they have a semi-fluid ground substance. 
Uh, they are found as packing material all over the body, including the dermis and skin, for its strength, elasticity, and support. Adipose tissue or fatty tissue. These cells are very large and filled with fatty material or triglycerides, and they have very little extracellular material. Uh, they are in the subcutaneous layer under the skin. They surround many organs found in the yellow bone marrow. Uh, they reduce the loss of heat and store energy and can help provide some protection for organs. Uh, the reticular connective tissue has only reticular fibers. They form sort of a mesh where cells are at rest, and they help to provide a framework within organs like the spleen, the liver, lymph nodes. Uh, red bone marrow, and they can bind these structures together and filter out materials like worn out blood cells or microbes. Since regular connective tissue is made up only of collagen fibers that are all in the same orientation, so they resist forces in the same direction. Uh, they're found in tendons, ligaments, and provide strong attachments. And since irregular connective tissue has uh, packages of collagen fibers going in any three directions, they define a mesh in these structures that are often there to make sure these materials are very strong and able to resist tensile forces, pulling forces in many directions, such as in the dermis and skin, around some organs and bones. The e since elastic connective tissue is made up of lots and lots of elastic fibers. They're found in the walls of the lungs, the walls of arteries and trachea, basically places that need to be able to stretch and return to their original shape. Uh, cartilage. Cartilage is a type of connective tissue that is often a vascular, surrounded by a perichondrium, bringing in the blood vessels. And it has a dense network of collagen and elastic fibers with chondroitin sulfate as the ground substance. Cells are found in little lacuna. So here's hyaline cartilage. Uh, hyaline cartilage, you don't always are able to see the uh, collagen fibers, but they're there, and the cells, chondrocytes, are in the lacuna. Uh, it's found at the end of long bones. Uh, around the ribs and the nose area, and the field skeleton provides smooth surfaces for joint movement, flexibility, and support. Uh, fibrocartilage has collagen fibers that you can see. Um, they are found in places like the pubic symphysis, the intervertebral discs in the vertebra. They're involving in support and joining structures together. The elastic cartilage has elastic fibers that have a mesh-like view. Uh, they are found at the part of the epiglottis and the external structures of the ear provide strength, elasticity, and maintain shape. Bone is also connected to tissue. It has a dense uh, compact bone tissue, this repeating uh, dartboard-like structure called the osteon with many layers called lamina. Uh, within the layers are little tiny spaces called caniculi that connect the lacuna where the osteocytes live to the central canal where you find blood vessels and nerves. They're the bones, they provide support, protection, mineral storage, etc. You have blood, which is the liquid connective tissue. It has blood cells. Cells then for our immune response. It's found within the um, blood vessels. Uh, muscular tissue comes in three types: skeletal muscle tissue, which are long cells with the striations that you can see and often have um, multiple nuclei. Found in muscles, surprise, surprise, for posture, heat production, etc. You have the cardiac muscle tissue found in the heart. It also has striations, but these cells are much shorter, only have one nucleus, and have these dense protein structures called intercalated discs connecting the cells together. Uh, pumps blood. Uh, smooth muscle tissue found in many of our hollow organs. These cells are small, they're tapered, they lack striations, they only have one nucleus. It's found in the iris of the eye, hollow organs, blood vessels, the stomach, intestines, and so forth, and they help to move things primarily. The nervous system has neurons and neuroglial cells large neurons that we know of and the tiny neuroglial cells seem scattered around the neurons. The nervous system is where you find them and they help to be sensitive to stimuli, convert it into nerve impulses, process it, sniff the various areas, to control muscle fibers and glands, and that is the uh, tissues of the body.